I'm going to wait just a few minutes here for everybody to get on. I hope you're having a good day. It's 6.30. Normally, we would be in service on First Avenue in Somerville, but we don't live in normal times. That's okay. Aren't you glad that God lives outside of time? Hallelujah. It's beautiful out today here in Somerville and Lafayette. Sky's blue and sunny. Wow. Springtime is really here. I haven't played this guitar for years. This is my this is a guitar I've had almost almost 30 years. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of keep it hanging on the wall in the studio here at my home. And we'll give it just another minute here and we'll go ahead and get started. And we'll tell you that we're living in a time of, uh, well, Timothy called it, well, Paul said to Timothy, he said it was a perilous times. And that translates to times of dangerous opportunity. And that's where we're at. We have a huge opportunity to witness to people, to instill faith in place of fear. Hallelujah. I can't help but look outside over my... I got a pool. Trees are budding. It's gorgeous here in Georgia. I thank God that He led me down here to Georgia because I pastor some of the greatest people on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Before I start, I'm going to go ahead and pray. And if you're feeling bad, you're feeling sick, you're feeling afraid, let all those feelings of lowliness, of ill health, fall to your feet. And let the healing balm of Gilead from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet just begin to lift you up. Father, I thank you, Lord, for those that are watching right now and those who will be watching later. Lord, I ask that you would just supernaturally touch them with your righteous right hand. Lift them up, Lord. Lift them up in spirit. Lift them up in body. Lift them up in mind. Let no fear overtake them, Lord. But Lord, let their faith arise. Hallelujah. We give you praise that it's so. That if we will just keep our minds stayed on you, <laughs> we will be triumphant in you. Just a closer walk with thee. Grand Jesus is my plea. Day Lord, none but these. 
sing with me, come on. Just a close walk with thee. Grand Jesus is my Yes, standing, walking close to Thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be, yes, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Yes, that's all we need. You know, this time has come that people are staying home from work. There's uh, there's fear that's widespread. And even at my office, I have to wear a mask. And we're practicing social distancing. Washing my hands more than I've ever washed my hands before. And you know what? We should do those things. We're not to be silly. We're, we're supposed to be smart. But we're also supposed to trust God. We're supposed to trust Him in all of our ways. Years ago, I wrote a song. And it was during a time of indecision. It was a time of desperation. It was a time of not knowing direction. Where will you lead me? And what will you do? How can I look ahead And not look to you? I know your love is with me throughout Yes, he is It's all in your hands, Lord In this there's no doubt It's all in your hands, Lord It's all up to you I've done all I can, Lord. I can't see it through. What about you? You are that beacon in a stormy sea. It's all. My burdens with thee. Listen, I'll take the steps you shown by the footprints you've laid, and I'll say the words I hear from your soft voice today. you lead the way I'll make my stand you're with me I say that it's all in your hands and it's all up to you I've done And it's all in your hands It's all in your hands It's all in your hands It's all in 
your hands And my burdens with thee Yes, my burdens with thee Hallelujah. Isn't it nice to know that you don't serve an inanimate God, a, a God who's a figment of an imagination, but he's alive. He sits on the throne. <laughs> we serve a living God that loves us, with, loves us with everything that he is. He calls you and I his family if you've received him as Lord, if Savior. Hallelujah. I want to just go right into this real quick. And I don't want to keep you too long. I know you're, you're busy in your lives. But you know what? We need to get together. We need to feed together. We need to worship together. We need to be able to reach out to each other. The social distancing, it would only go so far. But in the spirit, there is no distance. And I just want to encourage you right now, if you have a prayer need, if you have something going on in your life that you don't know which way is out, I'm going to tell you right now, he's the way. He's the truth and he's the life. He will set you free. He will set your feet on higher ground. Don't worry about things. Just let him lead and he will take you where you need to be. Hallelujah. So uh, I think Penny's on the other phone and she's able to communicate with you. And uh, there's plenty of people here right now, lots of agreement where we can see miracles happen. God loves you and we do too. So here we go. We're going to get into Philippians 4. It's, it's a beautiful day and it's, it's appropriate that the day would be such because it's been gloomy, it's been raining, and we've got bad news. Let me tell you something about the news. <laughs> Don't stay on the news all day long. Don't be searching out things about the COVID-19 all day long because you're going to get all bad news. Bad news is going to avalanche on you and destroy you. It'll bring down any hope that you might have. Don't let it get you. Don't let it in. Remember, you're like a boat that's on the water. The only way that that boat can sink is if it allows water in. Don't allow the world in. All right? So here we go. Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Jesus is coming back soon. I mean, come on, just lift your hands and just rejoice right where you are because in the midst of calamity, he, suddenly he's going to come and take his church out of this world. I believe it. I know it to be fact because this word says so. It decrees it. And I believe in this word. I know that he is coming back very soon. So the Lord is at hand. Verse 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It's important that during this time of, of uh, whether it's perceived or whether it's real, you know what, I don't know anybody that has the COVID-19, but I'm sure that there are people that have it and they need our prayers we they need to be undergirded by the church this could be the one of the church's finest hour to reach out to those who are lost and hurting but the peace of god which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through christ jesus get off the tv get off the internet and all this bad news and listen to some good preaching and teaching and engulf your your mind and your spirit in the word of god take some time out during this time of of uh, sheltering in place in in some areas to uh feast on the word of god and on the other side because listen now there's going to be another side we're going to go to the other side the bible says that these things come to pass they don't come to stay, and this is not going to stay. We're going to get to the other side of this, and soon and very soon, we're going to be together again over at 174 West First Avenue at Congress in Somerville, Georgia, 
and we're going to have uh, everybody on the platform and the praise and worship team. We're going to be praising and worship at the top of our lungs with all our might. You just never know. Some of us just might break out dancing with before the Lord with all our might, uh, soul, and strength and just give him the glory that he deserves. But we are going to the other side. Make no mistake about it. Let your peace be kept through Jesus. And then the verse that I want to really come to, uh, finally, brethren, verse 8, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. We're, we're finding a cycle of depression that's occurring in, in many people's lives. Depression, rotten fear, and uh, uh, uselessness, and, and just, uh, wow, just a, uh, uh, a grip on the hearts and souls of people in America. And um, what we need to understand is what Paul was talking about here in Philippians is not the power of positive thinking. Positive thinking, oh, that's wonderful. But I'm going to tell you what, unless God moves the positive thinking, you can think positive all you want. It's not going to happen. The only positive thinking that actually produces results is dwelling and meditating upon the Word of God. What Paul is teaching is the Christian thought should be focused on the truths of Scripture. You know, I remember when I was studying for my uh, uh, dissertation, and I was on my uh, dining room table, and it was it was a nice sized dining room table, and I had books opened up, I had commentaries, I had Bible encyclopedias, and and Hebrew Greek key study Bibles, and all these different things. And I was into the Word so deeply that when I looked out the window, outside was foreign, and the Word was, th that was the normal thing. And that's exactly the way it is. We're not of this world. We're foreigners in this world. We're sojourners in this world. And we are able to reach those peoples in this world through the power of God because we're ambassadors of the kingdom of God through Christ Jesus. The Lord, he says, we are the righteousness of God through him. And so we've been given a mandate to go out and touch people's lives through the word. But if the word's not in you, the word can't come through you. So anyway, we need to uh, have our thought life Focused on the truths of the Lord and um, thinking on whatever true. True as to fact. As to fact, it denotes a thing, um, actuality of God himself as the only and the final truth or test for truth. God can't lie. And so we measure everything by the word of God. Amen. And so think on whatever is honorable, noble, that which inspires reverence or awe and is dignified, worthy of respect. You know people like that. You know the, the Spirit of God. And you know His power. There's, there's times when we've been in service together and the presence of God is so powerful and so thick and so weighty. That kavod, that weighty presence of God is so wonderful. But you know what? Right now, where we're at, I feel his presence. He, coming home from work or going to work, I can feel his presence. But at the same time, I don't have to feel his presence to know his glory. I know his word, which brings the glory of God. Hallelujah. So thinking on whatever is true, thinking on whatever is honorable, thinking on whatever is right. I wrote in my column this week in the Somerville News, uh, according to the scripture. And I remembered a time in Ohio, it was winter time, and I was our house, our, our living room faced the back of our house. And so I was looking out the window and there was snow everywhere and we had a nice backyard with trees and everything. It was just piled up with snow. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, wow, the streets are really filled up. And I started getting all worked up. 
And I started thinking, well, how, how am I going to pay for the, the gas and the electric? And what about the gas for my car? And what about food? And what about this? And what about that? And I started getting in a tizzy. I started getting all uptight. And then I realized, wait, 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 wait. I backed all that those thoughts down because those thoughts were of something that wasn't even here. It was a fear that was trying to come, come upon me for something that wasn't even present. And I started thinking, wait a minute, I have heat on. And I thought, wait a minute, you know, what's real here? I've got food in the refrigerator. And I thought, well, what else is real? And I, I said, well, you know, I, I got gas in my car. The electric's on, I, I'm fine. And everything that was trying to come up on me and having me in a tizzy was uh, not real. Not real. Now, I'm not saying that this uh, coronavirus is not real. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, I speak for me in my home. We're here. It's beautiful outside. The Lord loves me. My wife loves me. My dog loves me. <laughs> my children love me. Grandchildren love me. We got food. And we're not sneezing. We're not, we don't have a fever. Thank you, Lord. And that's what's real. Now, by trusting the Lord, by washing hands <laughs> all the time, by wearing a mask at times, social distancing, practicing uh, what we've been taught over the television from the government, so on and so forth, it works. It'll, it'll keep you safe. But more importantly, the Lord will keep you safe. Believing in God doesn't mean we don't have any sense, okay? It doesn't mean that we have no sense whatsoever. It means we have sense. We realize that we're sinners in need of a Savior, and the Savior come. He came to me because I couldn't get to where he was, and all I had to do was receive him. It makes sense. We have a lot of sense. Let the Lord... Let the Lord minister to your heart today. Let him teach you more about him. You've got some quiet time. You've got some times that uh, you're not as busy as you have been because of everything that's going on. Those people who um, may be sick that you know of, well, you know what? Send those uh, names to us that we might pray over them. I believe in the power of prayer. I've seen people healed. I have been healed. Healing is for, it's the bread for his children. So don't be afraid. Anybody that you know, send them to us. We're going to pray for them. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm trusting, I'm believing that we'll be back together around Easter. But if not, we're still going to worship the Lord. We're still going to have a good time in him. And we're going to still trust him because he's trustworthy. And there is going to be another side. We're going to the other side. And it won't be that long. Trust in the Lord. Wash your hands. Pray. Do what you do. Because God loves you. And he won't let you down. He won't let himself in you down. Praise the Lord. Um, I just want to do one other thing here. Um, if you uh, would like to give to the church, I know there's a quite a few members of the church that's on here right now. You can text GIVE to 844-817-5853. That's a secure, safe uh, way to be able to give. And, uh, well, just like everybody else, you know, the, the church has got responsibilities. So you just give as the Lord leads you. Uh, we trust Him. And we trust him to speak to your heart. And uh, we know that your obedience is ever growing in the Lord. And, uh, you know, the uh, coronavirus, again, don't let, you, don't let it get you in a tizzy. Just be smart. Be smart. And uh, pray for people. That there's there's plenty of oil. We, you know, if there's any sick among you, let the elders of the church come and... Uh, and pray the prayer of faith and they'll be raised up. I believe that and I've seen that. And uh, we're trusting God for your health.
and your healing during this time. I can't wait to see y'all again. I can't wait to get back together and uh, just worship the Lord together with you corporately. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can get out of this thing. <laughs> but remember that Jesus loves you in all you're going and all you're doing. Jesus loves you. Bye-bye, everybody.